family, how you doing? I, uh, we've got church tonight at your house at Jim Pankey's house, so I thought I'd just ride my horse right on over there, and uh, we're here. So I want to introduce you to Jim's horse, uh, Trigger. Trigger. Uh, I don't know why he calls him that, but that's what it is. <laughs> but we are here at the Pankey house, so let's check it out. Look at this beautiful place God's given them, and we're looking forward to uh, coming on in the house and having a good time uh, together around God's word and with God's people. So what a blessing. I'll go ahead and... All right. Looks like we got a few people on. Now, this is what uh, Brother Jim is doing most of the days. Right on there. Amen. Say hi, Jim. Hey. Hey, thanks for letting us come over today. And being a part of everything, I uh, appreciate that. And uh, I was a little confused because there's so many different seating areas here. Uh, I wasn't sure where I was supposed to come in, but uh, I guess we're not doing it outside here. We're going to do it inside. And so let's go ahead and go in there. Let's see if Kitty's around. Kitty! Oh, there she is. Hi. We are in. Oh, it's nice and cool in here. And uh, Jim and Kitty... Have a nice place, and you'll notice there's lots of hats everywhere. You'll notice that. We should probably have a contest to see how many could count all how many hats she really does have. We're not sure. Tracy's trying to point me in the right direction. Oh, to the hat room. There it is. Some of you didn't believe us. We said she has a whole room with wall that have hats on them. So, but very, very nice i like all the different things she's got uh things handled in every single corner and this is their living room and hi tracy hi tracy all right what a blessing and we're just glad uh to be able to be here and i got a great audience today right there during the preaching and uh it's going to be good let's see if we can get set up here there we go. I think it's going to be okay. So, want to welcome you again. It's great to be here at Jim and Kitty House. And uh, I love the fact how close it is to church. And uh, how that every time I come over, uh, something is different. Something is moved. Uh, one chair will be in one place and then the other time it will be another place. And uh, I forgot to tell you, but maybe we don't have time today, but uh, in that room right there through those glass doors, if you ever come over, that's the cat room, okay? <laughs> that's the cat room. There you go. The cat room, okay? So you know you want to check that out sometime right there, okay? The cat room, right, Kitty? Yeah. A lot of fun stuff. And then, of course, they got a nice fountain in the back. And, and of course, I hope you got the chance to see... Uh, the beautiful view that you have uh, uh, from the top of Old Trigger there, right? And uh, we're just glad to be here. John chapter 15 in your Bibles, if you want to kind of get your way there. We had a great service this morning. And uh, I tell you what, your pastor was pretty encouraged. A good spirit. Uh, it felt like um, this morning uh, was... a. We were getting a little closer to the uh, the home feeling, so to speak, the family feeling at church, uh, meeting together. Uh, I know it wasn't the same because we're still missing uh, so many of our wonderful folks. And, and by the way, we do understand that uh, some are being very cautious of their health, and, and we're okay with that. And we're glad that uh, we have the opportunity to be together on Facebook at least. Um, we also have a YouTube channel, so um, if you wanted to uh, watch the sermons uh, a day later, I think they'll be uploaded on our YouTube channel at Canyon Springs Baptist. And so, appreciate Jeff taking care of that and managing that ministry. So there's a lot of things that are going on, a lot of things that are uh, moving parts, wouldn't you say? Uh, in this house, uh, as I look around, there's lots of moving parts. Um, they move things a lot, don't you, Jim? Yeah, Jim's got to move a lot of things every single day. 
And uh, but you know what? I kind of like it. It mixes it up a little bit, changes the uh, the view, and uh, you know, not everything has to be the same. And uh, I kind of like that just a little bit, at least the idea of it. I'd probably be exhausted doing it, but I'm, I maybe like the idea of doing, uh, the idea of it. So uh, John chapter 15, we're going to be there for a little bit tonight. And uh, let me just mention uh, a couple of announcements while you guys are turning to John uh, chapter number 15. We have uh, all sorts of things. Uh, that are in the works, of course. Uh, they're being planned. They are being talked about, prayed about. One of those things is uh, when are we going to meet uh, together on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights? Right now, for the month of June at least, we are continuing our church at your house. And uh, I think we almost got them all filled up. I might have one Wednesday night available, um, but uh, for the month of June at least, what we're going to do is uh, continue to have times like this, a fellowship, uh, get a chance to, to greet each other in their homes, and, and I really just enjoy this little time. Plus, I think Kitty told me she's got a little ice cream or a little dessert afterwards, so uh, I'm sure it's going to be wonderful, so we're looking forward to that. We have... Um, so as far as what we're going to be doing, as far as in the month of July, I, I anticipate, uh, things probably, the schedule probably would be changing a little bit as we get to July. We'll be letting you know, we're still watching the numbers. Uh, we are still praying about it. We're still wanting to make sure that uh, we can function at a minimal risk to you. And so we want to make sure that we are honoring the Lord and taking care of our church family. Uh, and I appreciate the spirit this morning. The song service was uh, really good, and I could tell that our people were singing and uh, having a good time with that. And I hope that the, this morning's message was a blessing to you about some things that are essential, of course, uh, our relationship with God and our fellowship with Him also. Uh, tonight, I want to kind of finish up um, some thoughts that we had the other night when we were over at Wayne and Kathy's about our actions. We talked about how we need to be wise and have make good choices and the choices that we make uh, turn into actual actions. Going out there and doing things. And sometimes we do a really good job at uh, purposefully having actions that are based upon the principles of God's word. And sometimes we struggle a little bit. And we talked about choices and how important they were, but we talked about how God's word was our final authority in that. And so we talked about how important it is and how unwise it would be if we would continue to base our actions on things like uh, past experiences. I'm not necessarily going to do tomorrow what I've always done yesterday because maybe I had a bad day yesterday, I got a flat tire. That doesn't mean I'm always going to have a flat tire. Uh, so we want to make sure that all the actions that we involve ourselves in, um, they, they're not always based upon past experiences. There is probably a relationship that you have missed out on, a friendship that you didn't get the blessing of experiencing to the fullest potential because we were acting upon past experiences with people that are members of the human race. And you know who that is. All sorts of different kinds of people. Now, we also talked about how important it is to not base our actions, the actual moving of what we're doing and the choices we're making, the acting of them out, uh, based upon natural reasoning. Natural reasoning is something that God has given us to a certain extent to be able to rationale things, to be able to reason things, deduct things. But if we solely base our faith upon natural reasoning, the actions that we go out and do uh, are not going to be wise. Abraham, um, we, we discussed Abraham and Hagar and Ishmael and uh, how they acted upon natural reasoning and how 
destructive that that really was. We also talked about how it's very unwise to live our life basing our actions upon simply watching other people's choices and following other people. We looked about the scripture where it says uh, if we compare ourselves with others, it's just a very unwise thing. Let me just encourage you uh, about comparing yourself with others. One of the major areas of the Christian life is finding that joy, that, that joy, that inner peace, so to speak. And one of the things that really can hinder that is if we are constantly comparing ourselves with other people that we are around. Uh, for instance, uh, there are some people that have been saved for 40 years. And, and through that 40 years, they might uh, have been at hard work studying their Bible and learning the Word of God. And uh, God has given them uh, some knowledge in some areas. And so you can't say, well, I've just been saved a few years, and how come I don't know the Bible like that? Uh, you want to be careful that you just deal directly with the Lord you deal directly with God about what he wants you to do, what kind of actions you should be doing and displaying in your life. And it's very unwise to spend a lot of time uh, comparing yourself with others. It is a pitfall. It is an area where pride and envy and all sorts of uh, fleshly sins can easily creep in and really destroy a great foundation that the Lord is doing in your life because you're so concerned about what other people are doing. Uh, I think it's a good idea to care about what other people, how other people feel. So it would be a good idea for you to wear deodorant. That's a good idea. You, you know, you want to present yourself in such a way that, uh, you know what, you're not off-putting and you're not out there just to start fights with everybody. But when we get to the place to where our life is consumed with another person's life and we fail to see the beam, if you will, that is in our own eye, or we fail to see the need that God has for us to follow our own path for him, that's where you could be going down the wrong path. Now, John chapter 15, as we finish, we talked about all these actions that would be unwise, and I want to maybe flip that a little bit. I want to talk about actions that are wise. Here are some actions that are wise, uh, and I'm going to talk about simply one of them tonight. The actions, the actual physical things, the words we say, the uh, places we go, the acts we do, the deeds we do, whatever it might be, if they are based on love, uh, that's a very wise thing. It's a very wise thing. You ought to ask yourself to help you Hey, Lord, help me to act out love like you acted it out to me. So in John chapter 15, we see God's love being acted out by himself. And we can learn some things from this. We can learn some very powerful truths from this. Uh, and so Jesus here is expressing to his disciples something important. Uh, when I think of friendship... I think of love. When I think of love, I, I often think of friendship. I often think about God's love for me, uh, the love that I have for others, and what a wonderful thing it is in life, what a joy it is to have good friends. Um, Jesus, in chapter 15, is expressing his love. Uh, his friendship is being expressed here. And I want you to just kind of notice the context here. Let's go ahead and start in verse 10. We're going to be dealing with 13, 14, and 15, and 16. But let's go ahead and start in verse 10. It says, If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So the Lord wants to give you the joy and a fullness of it. 
There's a way to get it. And it's not necessarily by doing your own thing. It's by fulfilling the law of the Lord. And Jesus begins to help us understand this by example. Verse 12, this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. He's talking to his disciples. He's trying to help them understand how important it is for them to display love, to show love, to be that kind of individual and express the friendship. So we see here in verse 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. Okay? That Jesus would lay down his life for his friends. Now we see that friendship is our way to act out uh, God's love to us. Friendship is our way to live out right actions. Being a good friend, being a good person. And it says right there, greater love of no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. So I want to talk to you about how Jesus gave us some examples and some qualities, and he expressed this love in actions that maybe we could put that into our life. Look, first of all, I want you to notice the sacrificial love. He says, greater love, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. And we understand that love, that someone would give their life for another. We understand the power of that love. That's a sacrificial love. And Jesus is telling us that uh, we need to give this love, and this means that this is a sacrificial, intimate love where Jesus gives and sacrifices himself for us. But I want you to think about the fact that Jesus demonstrated his sacrificial love to those that were his friends, but also to those that were his enemies. This is where we have a difficult time acting out God's love. Because easily it is, it's easier, excuse me, to act out love to somebody that we can that are lovable, so to speak. It's easier to love someone that is lovable. It's easier to love somebody that is, if you will, loves us back. But Jesus tells us about sacrificial love. And, and, and this is where the question is, do you and I demonstrate sacrificial love today? This is acting out. You want to be wise? You want to be foolish? We have to learn how to demonstrate sacrificial love. So, we understand that he died for all, even his enemies. And I wonder, why don't we demonstrate this more? I think there's just a challenge for all of us as we think about the love that Jesus has given towards us that maybe we could go a little bit further in our love. This is the action part. We love people. How do we act upon it? Jesus loved the world. What did he do? He gave his life for others. Now, how do you demonstrate that this week? Sometimes we do a good job. Sometimes we don't. But I think we should go farther. Now, if you look at verse 14, Jesus says, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, this speaks of the effects of Jesus and his sacrificial love towards us. It created something very important. And actions can create some amazing change. So what happens? What is the effect of these actions of love? Jesus, his actions resulted in change. Right there it says, right there, you're my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. And so there was a change in what they did. They began to follow Jesus. I'm just wondering, does anybody else that you come in contact with, do your actions 
change anyone. Hey, I know. We don't do very good connecting on a deep level in our society, it seems like. There are a few relationships that, where you get below the surface, so to speak, where real connection is happening. And But I think it doesn't have to be this measurable, huge, aha thing. But I think if you're steady at giving sacrificial love to others, the effects are going to be changed in that person's life. And so let me ask you, in your friendships, are the actions that you are involved in, do they result in change? Has anybody changed because of you? You see, this is what we need to understand. There are some wise things to do. And there are some foolish things to do. If we go about living ourselves and doing, making all the decisions based upon natural reasoning, based upon convenience, if you will, based upon what we see in other people, we are going to miss out on the power of what God can do in our life and in the life of the people that we love sacrificially. That is, we can bring change. That ought to be exciting because many times our friends are distraught. They're hurting. They're at their wit's end. They're at places that they never thought they would be. But you, showing love, can change people's lives. I want to encourage you with that. Jesus, in verse 15, went further. Not only did he sacrifice, not only did, did his disciples change and they begin to follow his commands, but notice what Jesus said here. He gave something that we tend not to give, and that is... He opened up his heart. He gave the disciples a chance for intimacy with him. Look at verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. And so this intimacy began when he says, Listen, our relationship has changed. No longer are you just my servant, my disciple following me. Now the relationship is changed, and I call you friends. And so this intimacy is beginning to grow. And, and I want to remind you, men and women, and some of you that have a difficult time expressing your, I was going to say thoughts or words or feelings, but you know what I mean, feelings. Some of us have a hard time expressing ourselves. But sometimes we need to look at Jesus here. He didn't have a hard time telling someone that he loved them. He didn't have a hard time at all. And so maybe that's something that we need to be thinking about. How are you doing? Do you express your love for others? That's an action. Expressing your love is an action. It's a word. And so Jesus expressed his love. And that created some intimacy. Now, notice that Jesus chose them. Look at verse 16 here. He says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Now, notice Jesus. He's choosing to express love. And he says, I'm here to tell you that I am going to initiate the relationship. He is going to act out and tell them, here I am. I'm initiating something. I'm telling you that I love you. And I'm telling you that I chose you. And uh, now it's time for you to respond. And so when we act out things in love, let's look to Jesus as our example and go out and initiate some relationships and fill our life with other people and giving them love so that you can see their life changed and your life changed in the process. What do you think? So he initiated an expression of love. I hope that's your case. I hope you're growing enough to be able to say, speak out and when it's time to express love, that you're the one initiating it. Or are you the one that has to wait around pouting in a corner for someone to come up to you and say, how are you doing? You look sad. Or, hey, 
I want to tell you that I love you. Are you the one always waiting for somebody else? Or are you the one initiating the expression or the action of giving love out by word or deed? I, I think it's good to initiate actions that are good. Jesus did. He says, I want to tell you guys, I chose in you. And this is what I chose you to do. I chose you to go out there and bring forth fruit. Verse 16 tells us a little bit more about these actions. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. So it says, I've chosen you. Notice, he says, I've chosen you to bring forth fruit. So love, the love of Jesus brought action. Acting like Jesus is a good thing. Uh, it brings the friendship of the Lord. It brings intimacy. Uh, he initiated it. And then we have to recognize that our actions of love to others ought to help other people bring forth fruit. You know, one of the things that uh, that I love is I love people. And one of the things I want to love, uh, I, I don't necessarily love everything about people, but I love people, right? Some of you say, well, I don't love what you do there. And I'm like, I don't love it either. So there you go. But one of the things when I love somebody... I really want the best for them, and I want them to grow in Christ. And so if you're my friend, guess what? It doesn't matter what you do. I want to be there to help you grow in the Lord. I want to help you to rise up and be successful as God would help you to be successful. I want you to go from the place of suffering and shame into a place of uh, success and joy and the crowning of God's uh, blessings upon you. Actions should help someone uh, bring forth fruit. Are you in the fruit-bearing process? See, if you base your actions upon Jesus and his example here of love, you are going to find that you're going to be a part of helping people bring forth fruit in their lives. And in turn, you are bringing forth fruit. Fruit that will remain. Fruit that will last. So we know that our actions can be very unwise. And we know how not to choose them. Natural reasoning and watching other people and, and, and all of this. But we have to come and learn how to express our love in action like Jesus did. He chose them, he called them, he, their lives were changed, and he desired for them to grow and to bring forth fruit. Uh, let me challenge you. Maybe there's someone that's in your mind right now that you can go and act. The works, the deeds, the things that you do in your Christian life, you can go and be a part of change, part of encouragement, part of help, part of friendship, and part of that person bringing forth much fruit. You know, um, sometimes what happens is individuals get real discouraged. They haven't seen any fruit in their lives for a while. And they get real discouraged. And they wonder why, and they, I don't know if it's a little pity party that goes on in their mind, I'm not sure. But they stop acting out in love. They begin this process of looking in the mirror every day and all they see is me, 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 and me. They become very self-centered, very selfish. Their perspective on life is very skewed so that whatever happens in life, how does it affect me? Now, let's not put our head in the sand and let's not go around not knowing what's going on in the world. But let's go around being very cautious about how important my life is as a Christian to go about expressing love by good actions because they will 
change people's lives. And in turn, if you find yourself in a position where you haven't brought forth much fruit, let me encourage you, go find someone to express love to, initiate it, and you'll see that that is a sure way that you can to start bearing fruit again in your life for the Lord Jesus. Sure do love you tonight. I want to encourage you to be back with us 7 o'clock this Wednesday. Looking forward to being over there at Peggy and Joe's Marcone's house. And uh, going to look forward to having a great Bible study there. We appreciate you. And uh, we want you to have a great, great time. Okay, God bless. We'll see you very, very soon.